it's interesting, one of the most powerful and repeated titles that we have of God is Lord of Hosts, or Lord, Lord of Sabaoth, which is a transliteration of Lord of Hosts. Lord of Hosts, Hosts is a military entourage. God himself is the divine warrior. He's the one who will fight all your battles. The people are saying, no thanks, we want to do it on our own. What happens in the Book of Mormon when people say, we'd rather, rather fight with our own armor of flesh? What happens to the Nephites or the Lamanites? They always lose. And it's always about the question, who do you choose to have as your Lord of hosts? Who's your king to go out to battle for you? Are you going to choose the kings who want to enlist you into their battles or God who will fight your battles? It's fascinating. In fact, if we turn back to Deuteronomy chapter uh, chapter 17, verses 14 to 20, God lays out his expectations for what a king should be like. And we'll put it here on the screen, but here's the expectations. Covenantal kings should not do these things. Don't acquire a lot of horses, meaning don't build a military. Why? Because God himself is the Lord of hosts. He fights the battles. Don't return the people to Egypt, which I interpret as don't return, them, return the people to the house of a bondage or apostasy, because God had saved them out of Egypt, saved them from bondage, saved them from apostasy. The king should not take the people back into bondage. Don't acquire many wives. Don't seek after silver and gold. So that's what a king should not be doing. Here's what a king should be doing. Have a copy of the scriptures, read the scriptures every day, teach the scriptures, instruct the people about the covenant path and its obligations. Do not lift yourself up above your brethren. If you look at the Bible and the stories that go on here, this is exactly what Samuel's seen. Your king is going to break the covenantal oath. He's going to make himself act like God and take everything. But the real kings promote God's word and his covenantal instructions. If you look at Nephi, what's one of the first things he does? He goes to preserve the scriptures. Now, he happens to get a sword out of that effort, too, which he uses to defend people. What's significant is that Nephi understands a real king spends his time teaching the Word of God. What does King Benjamin do? He teaches people the Word of God. What does King Mosiah do? All of them are focused on teaching about Jesus and preserving the records and reminding people. When Abinadi shows up, he has to show up teaching the Word of God because the king, Noah, had chosen to have too many wives and search after silver and gold. He was doing the exact opposite of what God expected. So the patterns we see here in Samuel in the Old Testament about God's expectations for kingship play out really well, well, they play out really clearly in the Book of Mormon. And it's very clear that the Book of Mormon, the leaders there are judged according to the covenantal kingship model that God revealed in Deuteronomy that we see playing out here in 1 Samuel chapter 8.